Um, well, I'm not sure I, I, kind of how helpful it would be. Uh, if we think it would be helpful into the public debate, then uh, uh, we would bring that forward. You know, but clearly, the, uh, the requirements are uh, kind of well known. Mathematically, uh, you know that uh, you're, you're essentially talking about uh, net zero emissions uh, in the early part of the second half of the century. Uh, and uh, uh, mountains and oceans show that net zero emissions is feasible. Uh, the time scale tends to look towards the end of the century. Uh, but um, if those Goldilocks elements can be brought together, uh, then that can be accelerated. Uh, you know, and in fact, you know, those emissions uh, profiles uh, that, uh, that we have, you know, we uh, have to uh, combine that with thinking from uh, others around non-energy emissions, because you know, clearly there's uh, plenty of emissions that are non-energy related. We're experts on the energy side. Uh, but we have uh, a relationship with the climate modelers at um, MIT, for instance, who have taken those scenarios and added to them with the, the non-energy emissions uh, and actually you know, uh, you know, show the, the kind of uh, temperature rise on average that would be uh, associated with those. And uh, you know, that's um, less than three degrees, it seems. And so um, uh, you know, that's the challenge now, I think, for us you know, broadly as society is how do you blend those two great moral um, imperatives of our time? You know, one is, is, is spreading the, um, uh, the quality of life, the modernity, the benefits of modernity from the minority population to the majority population, and how do you achieve net zero emissions?